kid in the 90s, it was always an adventure. You know, sometimes you got to travel off to a beautiful European country with your mom, got to live in an ancient castle, learn how to sword fight, and rollerblade down the halls with your 12-year-old crush who happened to be a ghost. So today, I'm very lucky to be joined by the cast and the director of the 1997 film, Little Ghost, and I will let them introduce themselves to you. Well, I'm Christina Wayborn, and I played Christine in in the movie, and I was the mother of the young boy that befriended the little ghost. And um, I currently live in uh, Arizona and Sweden, and I just came back from Sweden, and it is a beautiful country. Uh, and so was Romania, where we shot the movie. It was really an unbelievable, wonderfully uh, inspirational time uh, that we had there with the kids. So uh, I'll let the next person introduce themselves, and it's nice to be with you today, Tammy. How many years has it been? Three. <laughs> this is Linda. <laughs> <laughs> it's been three years. It's dog years. <laughs> this is your director. I'll see you there next week. We have some pickup shots. <laughs> well, uh, I am Jim Fitzpatrick. I played the character of Tony, and uh, I couldn't have been more happy with all of the wonderful women I worked with on The Little Ghost. Hi, this is Linda Shane, and I'm the director of Little Ghost, and it is a joy to be back with the cast of Little Ghost. I feel we should all be in Romania. Uh, I'm in Santa Monica right now. Recently, I was in Romania because I'm trying to prep to get ready for another shoot that will be in Eastern Europe. And the folks at Castell all say hello. Um, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, Trisha Lee, I, I'm thrilled to be um, seeing your face again. Uh, I'm going to take it from uh, here to say hello to you. Hi, um, I'm Trisha Lee Noonan. I was formerly Trisha Lee Hardy. I played Sophia, the little ghost. Um, I live in San Jose, California. And I've got two beautiful children. Filming The Little Ghost was probably one of the best experiences of my life. It was um, really, really fun. Romania was amazing. And the cast and crew was probably some of the best people I've ever had the pleasure of spending time with. (laughs) Ditto. And we all lived in the same hotel together. So 20 years, my goodness. So 20 years have passed, um, but we're not going to count those years. We'll just say three, of course. Um, (laughs) But let's talk about, you know, the beginnings of of creating this project. You know, were there a lot of auditions and also, you know, chemistry testings between the entire cast overall? Well, what started was uh, Kushner Locke brought me in to direct the movie and I worked with the writer and we did some rewrites and then we started casting right away. Uh, And I knew I was going to Romania, which I had never been to before. It had recently um, had democracy brought in um, when they overthrew Ceausescu. And I started auditioning. And when Trisha Lee walked in, I just felt she was the one. We auditioned hundreds of young women for Little Ghost. And she just sparkles and still does. (laughs) And just seemed so right. Um, For the young... for. For Christina's character, um, Christina was originally brought in to audition uh, to play to play Trisha Lee's mom, um, the mother ghost, uh, and we were so captivated by her audition that Peter Locke and I spoke and said, Christina should uh, definitely play the lead and play Jameson's mom and be the uh, elegant lead of the movie. And then, of course, once Christina was in our minds, when James walked in, he just blew us away. James, do you remember that audition? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I remember like it was yesterday. I had, I had immediate chemistry with Christina. We literally yeah. hit it off immediately. And we just had just this fun energy between us. And that's what we, I think that's what made it work. Yeah, it definitely yeah, did. It was really a fun, fun time in that office. I, I said to myself, 
Jim was so funny. And I was, you know, I was like the straight woman for his uh, great antics. And it was like, <laughs> I was so blown away by his humor. I, my jaw just dropped. And I said, oh, my gosh. You know, see, I was just taken into the scene. And we, we just had a, a great time. I mean, that was so much fun, Jim. You were so funny. Oh, thank you, Christine. It was, it was just some, you know, you know what I was? I mean, being in the industry now for over 40 years, everything begins with the director. The director, Linda did such a great job putting mm -hmm. a really good cast that had great chemistry and talent together. It was easy. Mm -hmm. It made our work easy because we just followed her lead. She gave us all the direction we needed and, and uh, yeah. it came out great. Yeah, and then Luke Listemeyer was kind of a, a, you know, a cooler entity, and he, he just meshed so nicely into the mix also, playing Pavel. Yes, and Laura Bruno, who sends her wishes, who played the assistant to Jim. Um, oh, yeah, she was great. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> she she um she's up in Canada where she is originally from and uh and also a mom to several kids um and I keep telling her to get back to acting again um which I hope she will she had a um she was working nonstop um before that and then um of course Sally Kirkland played played the ghost, the the mother ghost, and I keep in touch with Sally, and she also sends her love. Oh, oh that's great. How is Sally doing? Sally's doing well. You know, the, the funny story about Sally was it was she was originally um, not on my mind to play the part. I thought, well, if Christine is going to play um, uh, Trisha Lee's mom, and then I... I spoke with Shelly Winters, who I directed in Purple People Eater. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, Shelly, why don't we make, you know, be like the great aunt or, you know, and, and you could come and have this wonderful time in Romania being bigger than life as a ghost. And she said, <laughs> she loved the idea. And she said, but I can't handle the plane ride, Linda. You And she said, call my friend Sally. And, and I think she'd do the part for you. And that's how it happened. Huh. Oh my gosh! And Shelly, I mean, my gosh, I I loved her. She was just amazing to hear her name again. It's just wow. There are not too many young people that know who she was. Right. Well, from one one Academy Award winner to the next, you know, it was really um, right. it was like the the mantle was passed. And and Shelly had never done kids movies before, and and I don't think Sally had done a lot of kids movies. And she's still working um, Academy mm -hmm. Awards, excuse me, and. Um, and actually, Shelly had an Emmy. Um, and it was really, really, really terrific. But in terms of what we did on the set, what I loved about it, and we worked so quickly because you can never go overtime when you're working with kids and you can you don't want to anyway, but you are limited with your hours. Everyone knew their lines. Everyone came with a number of ideas. So we do take one. It was great. And then Jim would come up with something to do something else. And everyone was in their reactive mood and they would act responsibly right away. And we thought there were sometimes so many different takes to choose from, which is a blessing as a director. Um, the editing room had me laughing uh, with Carol O'Black, the editor, <laughs> constantly. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, the picture... That. Go ahead. You remember which one? No, I was just at the scene in the um, in the dining room scene when uh, uh, Jim gets pulled into the soup. <laughs> and I watched that last night, and my friend that was with me, I mean, laughed so hard. I've never seen this person laugh like that. Said, what, what's the matter with you? <laughs> is that funny? He said, "This is the best scene ever." <laughs> <laughs> And you so were such a trooper. You were such a trooper. They had, we had such complicated effects, like pull your tie into a hole and make you get wet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you were such a good sport about it. Then how do we have tomatoes fly and splat at you? You had to dodge them. Um, oh, <laughs> all fun, all fun tricks. 
watching the film again, I that scene, I could not stop laughing. I was I was laughing just as hard as I did when I first pulled out that VHS tape from Blockbuster so many oh. years ago. And I'll tell you, everybody at Blockbuster knew I had it. So, you know, even if it were to disappear, they knew it was me. So, <laughs> so it's so it's so surreal to talk to you guys. <laughs> Well, you know, kind of to- funny is we was had that, uh, was that the had, tomato scene or the soup scene you're talking the tomato about? Scene, Tammy? The tomato scene. Yeah. We had we had a stunt coordinator, but um, Linda decided that because you know having played the major leagues for four or five years, she wanted to throw tomatoes at me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew I where I wanted them to hit. and do do you want to tell them about the night the 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 mothers and christina and laura and i all went out dancing and jim was such a gem to babysit the babysit jameson and trisha lee and but jim was always pulling pranks on us at the hotel uh (laughs) which kind of looked like the hotel in the shining and uh (laughs) He would turn off the lights, and the, Laura particularly would get scared, and, and then people would think there were ghosts. And we had that pet owl in the in the courtyard. Oh, yeah. and, I remember and that? I'd never, yeah, and uh, uh, and the wild uh, and my dog, and then the hotel dogs, and um, and then one night we decided, well, Jim is always playing pranks on us. We have to play a prank on him. <laughs> So we took the tomatoes that we had left over from that scene and carefully put the ripest of tomatoes under his pillow. Yeah, so that <laughs> so when he lays his head down on the pillow, they would squish. <laughs> that was the best trick of all. You guys got it me was good. Amazing. <laughs> but Jim didn't think they were tomatoes. Jim actually thought they were some creature. There was a couple of times. Not just the one time you girls went out dancing, but there was a there was a couple times where we all just had just a fun time eating out together and just yeah. just checking stuff out together. It was really cool. It was one of the best trips I have ever had in my entire life. And the cast, like I said, and Linda was just awesome to work with. It was really fun. Yeah. And Jim, do you remember we went to Ely Nastasi's uh, tennis club there and That's right. played around the pool a couple of times. That was Actually, really nice, I, too. I have photos. I, Tammy, the photos where we look like we're against a green water painting, that is actually at that uh, club. We That's were right. at that. Really? And those, there's a photo of uh, Christina, I think myself and Laura, and then there's a photo of Jim because um, the kids weren't allowed to come. And uh, that was, it looks like we're against lily pads or a, a green forest. And, and that's in the collection of photos I sent you. And that is at the Tennis Champions Club. It was yeah. huge. That was great. And there was probably 500 people there at least. It's still there, yeah. by the way. It's still a tennis club. I saw it, I think the last time I was there, I saw it about two or three years ago. Um, the club is still there. Wow. You know, with with the actual castle itself, I have to ask about location wise, because this is just like the dream to be in a castle like that. So tell me about the castle. What was it like to shoot inside of there? Well, we actually shot partially inside uh, the set sound stages. We were we actually did a helicopter overview shot, which I sent you the helicopter and the crew and I flying to Transylvania in a helicopter that was a. a South African military transport secondhand helicopter, and they would open the door and hold my DP with a little anchor, and um, it was magnificent. I've never flown in a helicopter with the door open before, and uh, and we shot, and then all of a sudden we landed, but we hadn't told the locals, and it was 7 a.m. in the morning when we all landed. That was wild, and that was really Vlad's castle, Vlad, Dracula's castle. He lived there as it was also uh, Vlad the Conqueror, as it was other monarchs. It's now gone back to one of the monarchs' family. It's now, um, it was going to be a tourist center, and now it's gone private. It goes back and forth, and then the other castles were smaller castles where we shot on the balconies and the 
And also, um, remember, the secret garden was an actual place, but the actual rooms where Christina's in the bath and the um, and Jim and Trisha Lee are haunting the hallways, that was on a soundstage in Romania at Castel Studios. Yeah, it was such, it was such a great set, too. Very well made. I mean, it looked it looked like something. You know, I've been to I've been to about sixty seven countries, and England's one of my favorites to go to. And the interior of that castle, of that set castle that we shot on, the soundstage castle, was identical to all the English castles I had ever been in. It was beautiful. And the reason was is they did not paint the walls with bricks. What they did was they actually laid half inch or one inch thick bricks as part of the walls yeah. and or you know stone those workers were just magnificent the set uh, designers and so forth and they worked so fast you know i just came back from sweden and i was showing a friend of mine our castle there where i come from and i tell you uh the the sets were just as as well made as uh, as this uh, thousand-year-old castle that we have where I come from in Sweden. My favorite set has to be the church set, especially because that's where yes. Sophia gets to hang out. So, Trisha Lee, what did you like about that set in particular? Oh yeah, that was beautiful in there. Um, I don't know. I was it was just huge, and it was very old and crazy. And there was like a huge you had to climb up a ladder, and it was like open and it was very mysterious and neat filming in there. I liked that spot a lot. Um, yeah, I remember the first time we went in there and I was kind of like taken back by it because I didn't know what it was at all. I was like, wow, I didn't expect to see it there. <laughs> hey, Trisha, how many kids around the country recognized you from the little ghost? I, I still get people like, Finding me, even with my married name, and being like, you're the little ghost, right? Like, yep. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of um, people from Europe like that will find me, <laughs> search me out <laughs> and, on and Facebook when you, or on Instagram. When you and Jameson were dancing among the sunflowers, it was oh, just yeah. such a magical scene. Yeah, we had a hard time uh, learning to waltz, though, because... I kept trying to lead. And then our uh, teacher gets so upset at me. He's like, you're not supposed to lead. Let Jameson lead. <laughs> but yeah, eventually I learned. <laughs> that was fun, though. <laughs> that was so cute. There's actually a picture that Linda took of you guys practicing. And I was like, yeah. oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And that was both of your first on-screen kisses, right? Oh, uh, yeah. And it was supposed to be on the cheek. And then who changed that? Linda. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> I did ask permission from both the mothers. Yeah, it was no, it was funny, but he didn't realize at first. And so I went in to do it and it was supposed to be kind of a surprise. And so he kind of turned to give me his cheek. And then I think he like realized that we, we went to do another take. And he told his mom, he looked over at his mom and he goes, film, film, film. And I looked over at my mom and I said, stop, don't film, don't film. I was so embarrassed. That's funny. Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> and when I was watching it with my kids the other day, my son got so grossed out. He's like, ew. <laughs> Kissing a boy. <laughs> Let's talk about um, Pavel because um, it it we we kind of lost a cast member a couple of years ago. I think 2012. Can you kind of talk about what it was like working with him one on one? Because I loved, I loved him and and Christine together at the end. I thought it was so cute, you know. And I loved when he got to do the sword fighting with Jameson. It was great. Chris, uh, I guess I was the one who was at the filming of that. Luke was. A masterful painter, um, masterful artiste, really a Renaissance man. And he was so open to having this sword fight. Um, and my, was my cinematographer, Dan, who was an award winning Romanian um, cinematographer, and it was his first English speaking film, who knew fencing. And he taught Luke, who mastered it right away. And then there's a photo of also. Um, uh, a man wearing a golden shirt. And that was my S Romanian assistant at the time, uh, Christy Putinescu, who is now head of the studio at Castel. Wow. And he did a cameo in the movie as well. Luke was such a good guy. 
Did you say he passed away? Yeah, he passed away in uh, 2012 due to cancer. There was nothing uh, else I could find on, on, on him particularly, but he still has a website, which I will include in the show notes below to see his wonderful paintings. You, you mentioned the paintings, Linda, and yes. I didn't know he was an artist uh, in that nature, uh, besides also being an actor, because he doesn't actually have a lot of credits as an actor. So I just was, you know, browsing through these paintings and they're gorgeous, just stunning. Uh -huh. It was his primary career after Little Ghost. He had really wanted to focus more and more on it, and, and, and he did. And after playing an artist in Little Ghost, I think that actually inspired him to, to go forth and do it. He, he's he was such a, a nice guy, man. A gem. He was probably the, the, the actor that kept us all in sync because he was like the common denominator, and, but he was such a soothing person, too. He always kept everybody, you know talking and laughing and smiling. He was he was like the common denominator that made us everybody happy when we were waiting to shoot a scene, you know? Well, I'm a little bit in shock here because I didn't know that he had passed away. I didn't know. Um, I, I don't follow anything on the on the social media sites or anything like that. But I was watching the movie last night with my friend and, and I thought, oh my goodness, he was so handsome. I, I didn't realize that at the time, you know, I was looking at him and I said, wow. And uh, I thought, uh, you know, I'd been to one of his uh, art shows and he was an absolutely incredible artist, as you said, Linda. And to hear that he's uh, not with us anymore, Makes me a little sad, but at least uh, you know we had him at that time, and he he was just so nice and so sweet and such a gentleman. Yeah, and his his art also can be seen in a movie, Shop Girl, the touch uh, the movie that Steve Martin wrote. Uh, he's actually credited with supplying the art. Wow, so, um, he, that's awesome. He, yeah, a good a good mm. good man, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he en enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the experience of being with everyone. He he was he sp he spoke very uh, well of the experience, and uh, he was just terrific to um, to have. And it was such an international set, and at the time that was very unusual. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Christina and Luke, um, uh, and and of course most of our uh, smaller. Uh, parts were by the locals but you know to have brought mm -hmm. over Europeans it's now more common to have such an international set of, of course James Bond had the international group always um which was before <laughs> as Christine you know I I I Little Ghost is famous um made Trisha Lee a kind of a household name in a lot of kids places but whenever I mentioned Christina they said you worked with a Bond girl one of the originals <laughs> and that's always been exciting um, yeah, it's, it's exciting to work with her too. Extremely exciting. <laughs> oh yeah, but you know the Bond franchise. I didn't appreciate that either as much uh, when I was in the middle of it. But now, of course, so many years after James Bond and doing Octopussy with my girlfriends Maude Adams and Mary Sabin, and um, we are still really a close family of of women and. Uh, it's uh, it's almost like we're we're all sisters and we're still very much uh, uh, in contact with each other, you know. And always uh, we rendezvous at the premieres of the new Bond, and uh, we keep in touch in other ways too. So so it's really a a, a great thing to have so many years uh, of friendship, you know. There's a photo, by the way, of. The rap party where we look like uh, Jameson's there and Sally's there and I'm there and and it looks our arms are out. We are doing the Macarena. Yes, and that's how that's <laughs> where this dates us. Now, when I was in Romania and, and didn't call home a lot because long distance phone calls and we didn't have Skype, but I did have AOL at the time, which was one of the few, <laughs> few things that uh, was going on then. But no one told me that. I thought when they started playing the Macarena and, and Sally Kirkland taught me the dance, I thought she had learned a Romanian dance. And during the entire rap party, I thought, when I go back to the States, I'll show them this Romanian dance that's caught fire. And when I came home, I found out this was a dance that was being done in America <laughs> and all over the world. You remember towards the end of like the, the last week or 10 days of shooting, 
how you were only sleeping about two hours a night? Yes. You remember that? Yes. And then sitting in the garden like the second to last day and we were all reminiscing over shooting the movie and you fell asleep on that swing? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, I do remember because I thought I can finally sleep. I can <laughs> finally sleep. You know, there's never enough days, never enough hours in, as a director because after you you guys go back and take your beauty rest. I watch dailies and watching dailies in Romania at the time meant that, uh, we'd get in the camera truck and project it because we sent the film 35 millimeter film back to the U S they would put it on digital, send it to us. And so I would watch two day old dailies. And then, uh, it was under the big Romanian sky that I would walk out and then go back to the hotel and then plan and, and do some more. But it was, um, my mom always used to say that when I was a kid, I'd always used to say, I can sleep in the summer. I can sleep in the summer. And it was summer, so I kept thinking, I can sleep next month. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember the countryside, but, I mean, we were pretty much out in the countryside at times. Oh, yeah. um, but the fields of sunflowers, because yeah. sunflower oil was the main crop. And um, it's just gorgeous there. Um it was, it was really, I spent an extra week right after filming. A friend of mine made his way all the way from uh, the States and decided that, you know, we would see Romania together. He was just a good friend. And we hired a taxi driver to drive us because at the time uh, I wasn't confident to, you know, take a map and go into the mountains by myself. And uh, so we hired a taxi driver and it turned out that the tax, and I said, you know, we'll be gone three or four or five days. And the taxi driver was game, but it turned out he had never been out of um, uh, Bucharest as well. So we were all relying on the back. <laughs> Wow. How long did it take to film overall? Because it seems like it must have been a very, very long shoot. It was 24 days, four six-day weeks. Whoa. That was quick. And, <laughs> yeah. And and that Ooh. was, um, Kushner Locke was doing a series of videos for Paramount uh, Family Films. And uh, they were all that way. And they, I think Kushner Locke ended up doing 30 films that way at one point. Um, most of them family. And at a, for a while, Castel Films in Romania would write the name of a director after we left on the soundstage. So they sent me a photo and um, my name was up. And then they, they covered that when they redid the studio after Cold Mountain and Borat and a number of you know, Nicolas Cage movies and Don Cheadle movies. But one day they were redoing it and they happened to break apart one piece of the wall, just big enough to see my name and someone else's. So they Aww. sent me a photo. But when I was there, there two years ago and met with Christy and Vlad, still the owner of, um, of Pastel, um, Little Ghost's poster is on the wall in the main administration offices. Oh, I love Maybe. that. That's wow. great. <laughs> <laughs> made the wall uh, next to Cold Mountain and everyone else. <laughs> when I tell you, when I say that, when I say that uh, that Linda was the most prepared director I'd ever worked with, I wasn't kidding. I mean, she had every single thing down to the minute. What we were, where she needed us, what we needed to be rehearsing. What I mean, she was, she was on it twenty four seven, and that's why the film came out so good. Oh, yeah. thank yeah. you. And it's a good but thing it, you bring that up because I, I feel like we're we're getting a new surge of female directors in the industry oh, yeah. because that is not something that's commonly known because it's pretty amazing because at the time can you can you describe what that experience was like for you as a female to be able to run a production as a director? Well, it's interesting. It was my first film was actually a few years prior to that. Um, Purple People Eater, where I met Shelley Winters, and with Thora Birch, which was her first film, and and Thora, you know, from Ghost World and American Beauty, and Thora and I actually um, have a book project that we're adapting to make a movie of. Um, when I first got on set, um, I always knew from having started with Roger Corman that you know you had to be prepared, and um, uh, the joke is, you know, women will work harder and for less money. Um, so that. 
that was, you know, back then kind of the, the saying, though I didn't, you know, as a kid's movie, people found that kind of, oh, well, I guess they could break into kid's movies. I didn't even think of that when I was first going forth. Um, so Little Ghost, when I was brought into Little Ghost, um, one of the people I had met who had been a production head over for Roger was then over at Kushner Lock, and he brought me in, and he... And I had uh, worked together, and so he recommended me, and I went through the interview process. And uh, But when I got to Romania, I found there were so many women in strong positions. Uh, former mm -hmm. East, uh, Soviet or Eastern European or communist nations had women as doctors, but not usually directors. But... Uh, the the way that I found makes it uh, a crew will know within an hour whether you know what you're doing or not and whether you're prepared. And at that point, if you know what you're doing um, and have everything organized, um, everybody's willing to work and work just as hard. Um, in this movie, uh, Christina wasn't the only person with the name Christy or Christian or Christina. We are... Um, <laughs> I would say the word Chris, and we had a female. We had a female uh, line producer named Christina, um, and we had a spelled with a C. And Christy was my um, uh, uh, assistant at the time. Uh, and then Christian um, Nicolescu is the award-winning production designer. So we had so many Christies. <laughs> But I found actually there was less um, concern about a female director in Romania than there had been maybe in the States. Although at one point they told me they had one other female director in Romania. We had a kind of a discussion at some point and her name was Linda. And I, with a very straight face said, yes, in order to direct as a female, your name has to be Linda. <laughs> 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 we, you know, it's it's been quite a while, and I I think that with the changes going on um, and, the, and the good experiences, that more and more, um, you know, the the dynamics are international and um, and more open to so many things. It shows with this film because again, it is supposed to be a kids' film, but for me, it's something when I look back at it, I'm you know I'm noticing little things, you know really really great lines very great slapstick of mm -hmm. course a great relationship between the kids of course that's always lovely and you know in with a talented group of people that are just all bringing their a game and you have a crew that is set out to make the best you know possible setting and 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 visuals as possible so you know you guys all coming together to make something like this people have been commenting on you know clips of the film on youtube and they're like oh you know i used to watch this film when i was younger mm -hmm. and so it's so nice to know for me as a fan too that there are other people who also watched it and enjoyed it as much as i did so you know you guys have like this legacy going on it's great <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was so much fun. You know, you know, it was really funny. And I had, I laughed to myself every time I did it. Every time I had to do like a, a, a comedic bit, whether if it was verbal and, and it wasn't physical, none of the Romanians really understood it, but they, they smiled <laughs> and nodded their heads like, like they got it. And that <laughs> You laugh twice as hard because they didn't understand a word I was saying, but they would smile and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I and I always love that line in the movie. Just yeah, smile and nod. Just smile and nod. And he will go away. <laughs> Is that where that line comes from? Because it, 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 I I would only assume that's where the inspiration came from for that line because it shows up four times in the film, and every yes. time it makes me laugh even harder. That was the Linda edition at the last minute, and it worked every time we did it. Yeah. <laughs> Linda, you didn't speak English, right? No. Um, some of the some of the actors, for instance, the the Je Rudy who played the butler, the older gentleman who's on Facebook and and says hello as well. Um, he he didn't speak English well enough. Um, and the two actors that played the smile and nods, they were both from the local theater and were very very talented and came in to audition for me. Bogdan and Theodore, um, and both of them work uh, quite a bit in, um, in in Romania, but they didn't do many English-speaking films, but they were 
they they understood the joke well enough as well. The story and also, you know, had never seen someone like Jim's character, Tony. Yeah. And Tony was bigger than life. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and Tony is not a, a typical character other than an American. And, and Jim... <laughs> Jim brought to it and even more yeah. uh, that scene where he's wrestling with the hose. Um, <laughs> that was not special effects. That was just Jim. That was amazing. <laughs> just to turn on the water and right. that man had wrestling with that hose. And it looked like we had the best special effects. And then of course <laughs> the other water scene I love is Christina in the bubble bath, oh, um, yeah. which is yeah. such a beautiful sure. scene. You could have put that, seen in that shot in any film comedy kids movie whatever I love that shot <laughs> yeah it was beautifully done Linda you did a great job on everything I was just blown away uh watching this movie I don't know Jim if you heard me say that in the beginning there but I watched it last night for the first time in so many years and, uh, you know, the appreciation that I have for it now when you get a little distance to, to things is it, just unbelievable. It was just such a privilege to be part of this film. Absolutely. So I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just feeling really good about, uh, about myself. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'd say, well, I'd do a little children's film in Romania, you know. But this is a fabulous movie, Linda. Yep. So I'm just, uh, so uh, every bit as good as uh, Octopussy with Roger Moore. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because, because Jim, Jim has this uh, tongue-in-cheek uh, sense of humor like uh, Roger Moore does, you know, and, <laughs> and his stuff. It is a very uh, it's a fun thing to watch, you know, it's just great. And you got yeah, to play with all those special effects, too. You know, it, it, it seems like for its time, you know, that was, you know, very extravagant. So, you know, Trisha Lee, did you have a favorite ghost effect that you got to do, even though you didn't get to see it being done at the time, but when you got to watch the film? Oh, uh, turning into sparkles, of course. <laughs> when it would disappear. <laughs> Magical. <laughs> Who doesn't love that? No, actually, um, flying. That was really fun. When I got to give uh, Jameson a boost, I think it was called a scorpion, right? The thing that we were on? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's like a platform that you stand on and then you kind of put like, I think they put like sandbags or something on one side and pushed it down and then we went up. It was really neat. It's kind of that almost was, like a seesaw. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it was it was great. Yeah, almost yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, almost like a seesaw, or actually almost like a you know you're being pulled up on like a lever. Um, it was it was really terrific, and you guys were so good. I was a little nervous there when they they thought they told me this was the rig, but you guys just handled it like you were surfing. It was really fun. <laughs> you know, by the way, um, the writer. One of the writers, uh, James Hathaway, um, he, I mean, uh, uh, Jamie McLaughlin, he went on to uh, executive produce The Haunted Hathaways on um, Nickelodeon. Wow. All the, uh, so I think he, he kind of liked the idea of haunted. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck with him. Did you yeah. guys get to keep any Gorgeous. costumes and props? Um, what about my, you, Trisha Lee? I, my mom has the dresses somewhere. <laughs> I, I remember. I, I remember know. they asked if if you could keep the dresses, and yeah. at first they were, uh, you know, they're beautiful velvet and lots of material, and and it was so wonderful because they said yes because it's like they're perfectly meant for you, and yeah. well, uh, uh, has, I guess um, maybe one day your daughter will get to try one on. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. She's a she's a princess, so that would work. <laughs> well, that costume designer Juan Pinesco um, is still costume designing, and um, and she's amazing. I mean, yeah. she's terrific. Those were just the most beautiful dresses. Every little detail. I got to keep a couple shirts and a jacket. Nice. Oh, you did. <laughs> I did. That's awesome. And my my gowns were just absolutely blasted. Oh, oh yeah, they too. were. Uh, the were, black one at the um, uh, president presidential dinner there was with the cutouts. It was just beautifully done. I bought the one in silver that uh, I was know, going to say that to silver lame. Yep. Yes, I have a picture of that yes. that you'll see online. And, and Linda, you're gonna you're gonna love this uh, this thing because I recycled that dress for the premiere of Spectre about <sighs> uh, three three. Uh, 
two or three years ago. It's, it's going to be three years now coming up. So that dress is actually on the red carpet at the Royal oh. Albert Hall. If you Google, look up um, uh, Spectre premiere at the uh, Royal Albert Hall, uh, I put a little black, uh, lacing underneath it, and then I um, I I actually painted a pair of uh, boots that I sawed off the. You know, I do a lot of designing, so I sawed off the. So they're people, the tall uh, silver oh, boots. Oh wow! And then and then uh, uh, I made some. Uh, I have some uh, kid gloves with the cut off fingers. You know where you you don't use because I had silver nail polish on and a silver glove that was buttoned up. I mean, that dress is so drop-dead gorgeous. Yep. You have to see it uh, in, the, in, in, in its new version. That's the one thing that the people that Linda hired to be a part of the project made mm -hmm. the production value of the movie like 10 times what the actual budget was. It looked yeah. like a $2 million dollar movie. It really did. Yeah, right. it's a, you know, the 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 opportunity to work with uh, Romanians uh, who were so gifted in what they did, it, it turns out that uh, the, the former ruler had been very inspired by propaganda movies. So he trained people technically in film uh, because they made so many propaganda movies. So people would go to cinematography schools for three years. The first year, all they would study was painting, not even film. And, and this craftsmanship, to, the opportunity to work there was was magnificent. Wow, absolutely. You guys put together something very special, especially for children of that age, because it doesn't treat them like children with the script and with the lines. It's more of, it's more of, you know, we're on an adventure. We're on an adventure with this little boy and this little ghost, and we're going to have a good time. And you guys all put out 110% into it. So is there anything you'd like to say to the people who got to watch this when they were younger? Because I'm going to, I'm going to assume we're going to have a lot of listeners who are just going to freak out that you guys are all back together on a call. <laughs> Trisha, why don't we start with you? As the little ghost. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I just, um, I just hope that we made a movie that can bring joy because it has brought a lot of joy to my life. And I thought, I don't know, it just was a good story and it always makes me feel really happy. And all the memories that I have from filming it make me feel really happy, especially talking with all you guys right now. I'm getting all this, you know, rush of memories and it feels so great <laughs> thinking about everything. Um, I feel like it was, it's a positive movie and it's got a really good, just the whole storyline, everything just comes together really well and really nice. And, uh, I just hope that it makes you happy and smile. It, yeah. You know, um, I feel the same way. I think, um, I think when you, when you're able to be a part of a really great cast and crew and you really make a fun movie for fans that can show their latter generations, their children and their children's children, their grandchildren. I think it's something that's, that holds true for the rest of the time. And this is one of those movies because it's family friendly and every child will enjoy it because the special effects are really, really good. I mean, not my special effects because I just got beat up the whole time. But <laughs> <laughs> but I, love, I love the visuals. The visual special effects were really good. And even my kids were like, wow, that's really good. How'd they do that? And I said, I don't know. I just heard about that. But, um, yeah, it's just fun to have, be a part of a, a movie that, that fans really enjoyed. And uh, someday, someday in the next two or three years, I got a movie that's a big, big time comedy that I'm producing and directing called The Last Guy on Earth. And I'm happy to say that I learned my, uh, my etiquette on set from, uh, from Linda. She was a, a great director and a great leader, and she really, she kept us all prepared and ready to go, and she did it with a smile on her face, and that's that's not easy to do, and she did it. She did a great job, and that's why the movie came out so well. Thank you, Jim. You're well, welcome. I have to say that uh, I've there's an old adage that says 80% of directing is casting. And mm -hmm. I, I really, truly believe it's true. Um, I've had the privilege to work with all of you, but also to experience that time together. And 
to me, what director's job is not only being prepared, but also eliciting and allowing your talent to bring what you expect. And then if they have an idea for something different or more, try it. And we try it try it and we'll film it both ways or we'll try it and we'll say oh that's great and even some of the crew members would have an idea and I'd I'd say if you want to talk to me before production about some things please do um it's a collaborative art it's a joy it's a it's also being in the trenches together um <laughs> when you've spent 12 to 14 hours a day with someone six days a week in a foreign country without your family and support group, um, you get to know each other and, and it's almost like being in the military together. You, you, you bond, you're a band of brothers and sisters. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then having Romania as our home base, uh, was, was amazing. Uh, the people, yeah. the place and, um, their sense of welcome to us, um, brought us into a, a, and at a period where Americans weren't everywhere you looked. I think we didn't see many Americans when we were no. there. No. Uh, no. And, and so it was really, really a joy. Um, and also, I always love doing kids' movies that have a sense, no sense of, I have a separate sense of time, a, a surreal sense of time for exactly that reason, that you can share it and then you can share it to your next generation and next generation. Yeah. Uh, because that brings you together. You're experiencing what previously has been experienced. And also, uh, because it's a mystical place and look, we have our own American princess, Meghan Markle has married, uh, yeah. And oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's still a, a majesty and a wonder for in, in all over the world for thrones and royalty and kingdoms and palaces. And we got to experience that as well. I just love the, the lesson of the movie, too, you know, because a lot of kids grow up in um, dysfunctional homes and maybe the parents aren't as engaged with the child as, as they should be. And uh, the friendship that was formed between the little ghost and my son there was just so dear. And then, uh, you know, the, as the movie evolves, you see... Um, uh, the parenting uh, feeling coming back to, to Christine and, you know, she realizes that she's been putting her time in the wrong place uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Jim there. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I think, <laughs> I think it, it, it just, uh, it's a, just a very, um, it's always a current, uh, current uh, issue, you know, with people trying to, um, find meaning in their lives and uh and sometimes we step in it pretty seriously and uh hopefully with enough love and understanding we uh we can come back together again i think it had a lot of good good messages yeah a, a time of and healing I still really know another thing was that that scene jim when you were holding um uh jo uh, joanne and, and and you see me, and you drop her. That is <laughs> such a funny scene. You literally, she just dropped. <laughs> oh, that was so great. <laughs> that was that was a Linda direction. <laughs> and Laura oh, was a good. very good sport. <laughs> yes, she was. She was a great sport. What a good, what a good girl she was. She was a great, a great person to know. Yep. And we became really good friends uh, throughout that shoot. And you know, uh, I just wish her well, and I hope she listens to this at some point. And um, oh, she will be. She says she's definitely listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> well, uh, my final question for you guys again, thank you so much for doing this. Um, my final question is if you could sum up your experience working on this film with one word, what would that be? And Trisha Lee, why don't you start us off? It's really cheesy, but I would say magical. <laughs> oh. I have to say two yeah, words. I would have to say two words absolutely fulfilling. Oh. I'll go with the two words. Creatively, magnificently. <laughs> Creatively, <laughs> magnificent. 
<laughs> well, I think I have to second my, my first word that came to mind was magical also. Oh, well, good. Not just for the, <laughs> you know, the subject matter, but the magic between the, the characters and, and just being in Romania and being with you guys there and yeah. having this experience. Uh, it, it's just very, very endearing to relive this again, I must say. Yeah. I agree. So well, here's yeah. to another 20 years of Little Ghost. I, I can't wait to show it to my <laughs> little ones when I have some. So <laughs> I show it to my cousin. So you guys are continuing to make people laugh and be entertained. And thank you guys so much for being a part of this reunion. I really hope we can get like a physical reunion together at some point. If I win the jackpot, it's happening. <laughs> Tammy, God thank bless you so Luke. much. Yeah, Tammy. God bless yeah, thank you, Tammy. We can make this the greatest spa on earth! What is this crazy man saying? Just nod and smile. He will go away.